Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 63 of Bell to Bell with Bobby Blaze. I am your host, Professor Jeremy Vilmer. And joining us now, the star of the show and a man who never shit the bed when recording a pro wrestling show, Bobby Blaze. Uh, hey, Professor, and I'll tell you what, I'm not the voice of the NWA and I don't do the editing for him, but I do hope that this podcast is better than the last episode of the NWA Power. So through the power of your magical editing, I hope you make this a very, very good Catch as catch can episode of the Bell to Bell with Bobby Blaze. And no, I'm not shitting on the NWA just yet. Not just yet. We have many uh, things to do before we get there. Yeah, Bobby, we don't really have a top 10 list this week. We're just going to kind of get caught up on things because obviously this is Thanksgiving week. We're all a little bit trip to feigned out and turkey fat. Probably we've had a few too many snootfuls of eggnog, and, you know, it's a little hard to write a top ten list in that condition. <laughs> well, we had several ideas, which we'll talk about during this episode, and, uh, yeah, we just wanted to do a kind of catch-up, kind of house cleaning, so we called this one Catch as Catch Can, and uh, we're just going to do that, man, and, and have some fun with it, too. Just so you know, we are talking wrestling, though. We will be talking lots and lots of wrestling. That's what our fans come here for. Good old uh, cool wrestling, uh, some updates on what's going on in the current world of wrestling, and, and just have fun on our podcast, man. Yep. But, you know, Bobby, uh, getting started here, I understand that not only are you a podcast guest, that you appear on other people's shows, that you have your own podcast, you have your YouTube channel, but you're also an author. Yes, yes, yes. And you know what? I've got a couple of books out there, but you know what I'm going to talk about first. If you go to Amazon, I've got a couple of ebooks you can download. And yeah, you've probably seen I've got a, I've got a new one going to be coming out soon. I'm kind of holding off on the release of that because it's a little bit detailed. It's a triple X one. I'll just say that trying to cross my genres up. Mm -hmm. But what I want to talk to you about today, I've got one called Seasons F and Greetings, my best Christmas ever. It's a little ebook for $2.99 on Amazon. It's the a little Christmas story back when I was about 20, 19, 20 years old. Uh, true story. It was really fun. It turned out to be a humorous little story. So check that out if you can. I also got Yard Time. I think it's on there for like two ninety nine, And that was just to help uh, finance my second book, which was I Kicked Out on Two, The Educational Wrestler. And, of course, I got my other book, Pin Me, Pay Me, Have Boost, Will Travel. So what I'm going to do right now, Jeremy, you can get all those on Amazon. But what you can do is this. You want to help out the show? You want to buy a book for someone for the holidays? Go check out my two books. I mentioned the first one. Uh, I, educa uh, shit. I kicked out on two, The Educational Wrestler. Yard time is in that. The easiest way to get right. that, it goes to tinyurl.com blaze book two i know i'm doing it in reverse order but i did it for that reason because I, I would hate for someone to pay you know 2.99 for a story but then they get the whole book for you know 14 dollars. right so get that and help out the show because we could you know we appreciate it very much my first book which has 103 reviews i'm really pleased with the reviews always happy uh to get a review good positive um indifferent just as long as i get reviews that helps uh, independent authors a lot and that's um <laughs> pin me pay me have boost will travel and i'm not reading this folks and i'm not drinking i'm just telling you <laughs> it's still it, early Go to tinyurl.com slash blazebook1. So if you want to get the help the show, get a little bit of a kickback. And why not? Because we got a hell of a good show. Uh, go to tinyurl.com blazebook1 or tinyurl.com slash blazebook2. And you can get either pin me, pay me, I kicked out on or I kicked out on 2D Education Wrestler. I'd be most grateful. It'll put a smile on a professor's face, too, I'm sure. And as soon as I get out of this uh, mode of thinking about books, I had my book plug somewhere else in the podcast, and I'm not even thinking about it right now. It just comes natural. I'm not reading. I've got my eyes shut. So, anyway, thank you very much. And, yeah, Jeremy, um, I hope some people download that little short story, too, though. That's um, I think they'll enjoy it. It's called um, Seasons F and Greetings. Um, my best Christmas ever. So read it, find out if it really was. Yeah, it's well, it's, it's definitely worth checking out. I, you know, I still haven't finished your your second book, but I got to tell you, I'm more interested in your uh, your upcoming Triple X story. <laughs> From a purely purely research based perspective, of course. But I understand that smuts, short smut stories, sell quite well on Amazon. I'm gonna find out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have, uh, I've had this. I actually started working on it over a year and a half ago. I finished it back in about September. I've just held off on releasing it. Now, just so people know, um, it, I have the cover. It looks really nice. Uh, I've had it printed out. The story's ready to go. 
I'm just holding off for personal reason right now as to whether to drop it or not. It's about 20, 21 pages. It's a, uh, it's a little, you know, erotica romance, triple X. It really is. And I'm just trying to show people that I can write in different genres. Uh, that's, uh, with Christmas coming upon us, that's why I did mention, you know, seasons up and greetings because it is a holiday story. And then of course, uh, Got to plug our books to help our show out. You know, I don't know that there'll be a lot of wrestling fans that want to read my smut, but if you do, that's fine. I just know it'll be, you know, it'll be under my name, but uh, and get me a different genre on my Amazon page. And my Amazon page, of course, is Bobby Blaze Medley. You just type it in. You'll see my author page there. And eventually you'll see, uh, uh, as Jeremy called it, smut. I like to think of it as uh, just erotica romance. <laughs> oh, uh, no, no, trust me. I meant smut in the best way possible. I uh, like I know, smut. I, I think it's a positive thing. Well, I think you'll <laughs> like this story. It's a good little short, short story um, based on no one. That's the other thing, too. You know, I wanted to really try to come up with something outside of the way I normally write. And so uh, I'm just, um, you know, beta, beta tested it and. Um, I think it'll get some good reviews uh, if you're into that type of thing, you know. Yeah, and and if you're not, maybe read this one. Maybe it'll change your mind. That's right. That's yeah. right. And, broaden uh, your broaden your horizons a little bit, people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I I think uh, man, I'm I'm looking at the cover now. I went had a hard copy printed out of it uh, just so I could see it, you know, physically. But uh, I, I got a digital 3D and I got a digital photo of it um and i got it on fiber jeremy <laughs> just so you know i purchased the cover on fiber about two months ago and i'm really really pleased with the cover so oh there you go well you know you can get yeah. a lot of good stuff on fiber you know bobby i wasn't gonna do this this week but um you I know wasn't what, either <laughs> you know what else people can get on fiber voiceovers they can get voiceovers and they can get tweets yes why don't you tell yes. them a little bit about that well, I don't have it in front of me. I just know this. If you go to Fiverr, you can get a lot of good uh, digital work done. You, like Jeremy said, you can get voiceovers done. Um, and, and I'd use Jeremy. I've used him. I, I've actually used my Fiverr account because I purchased. I didn't say Jeremy do it for me as a friend or a favor. He actually sent me a really nice 30-second commercial for my second book. You know, I kicked out on two. I've ran it on Twitter before. It's very professional. In fact, I'll try to run it again later on today. But I paid for that service because I wanted to help my friend jeremy out and i want to see him do good on fiverr as i said i purchased the uh the book cover you know from someone uh on fiverr and on my account what i do is i run it um i run a little bit of a uh tweet thing a special for for other podcasts and for authors uh for pro wrestlers for events that you might have and i'm not sitting here trying to sell you a, a tweet because i do retweet a whole lot but this is for people on the podcast that may not have the exposure that that we have or even some of the the, the bigger ones have but these are like small upstart podcasts and they're willing to put five or ten dollars into getting tweets for two or three days and what i do is i send out two or three tweets for two or three days depending on which package you buy one my gig at fiber and that that's all it is and i and i try to use proper you know keyword hashtags and things like that to where people may say you know what i haven't ever heard of this podcast but i'm gonna give it a chance and i'm gonna give it a listen to and uh that's what i'm trying to do is help expose some of those uh, or get them some exposure on the um on their podcast and as well as anything else that you want, you know, upcoming wrestling shows, uh, other authors and books. I try to help them out too, you know, so, uh, and I know you do the voiceovers. Tell them what you do, Jeremy, and give an address if you got it. Cause I know it's, uh, uh, fiverr.com slash Jeremy Vilmer, I think. And yes, fiverr.com slash Bobby Blaze 744 on our Fiverr accounts. That's right. Basically, I am doing, and I'm going to make mine super focused. I'm going to be adding some more gigs here pretty soon. And I'm going to try to focus just on people like us who have a podcast that need help, maybe like a cover image for iTunes. But right now, you can get my voiceovers, five bucks. I'll do an intro for your YouTube or your podcast. Or, you know, if you got some short show on some other, like maybe Facebook or whatever. But five bucks will get you up to a hundred words. I got a good microphone. Um, I've got a really awesome voice. And I just did a couple voiceovers for another podcast who just wanted a little intro. Uh, real easy to deal with. They told me, Hey, these 10 words take about 10 seconds. Did one take. They said, no, okay, now do it a little more announcery. Went back, did that. It took all about two days to get them set up for five bucks. So yeah. yeah. 
And the one I've got, I'm real pleased. Jeremy sent it to me, and I'm not patting him on the back because he doesn't. He he did all the work. It, he sent it to me one way, and I was like, Jeremy, that's fine, but you put brakes in there. I wanted it more like a commercial. And next thing I know, within two days, boom, I got it back straight 30 seconds. And because the way I had sent it, that was my fault. The way I sent it, I broke it down to like sentences. And then Jeremy read it as sentences, which I could have used, but I wanted to put it all in one. And when I say sentence, I mean individual, like sound bites. Jeremy put them back together. Terrific editing and terrific voice, as you all hear every week on this show. And, man, I got a nice 30-second spot where it's just a nice spot for, uh, you know, my, my book. And I appreciate that very much. And uh, like he said, the other people, they, they said, you know, do it more like an announcer. He turned it around, boom, two-day service. There it was. You're only out five bucks. You put it up on Twitter, Facebook, any of your social media stuff, uh, promoting your podcast, promoting your YouTube channel, promoting whatever it is you want. You got Jeremy's great voice behind it, and that really does mean something because people are like, wow, that's good. Uh-huh. <laughs> and they open your link, and they open your link, and they're like, hey, okay, now they can decide. Do I want to listen to this podcast? Do I want to buy this book? And uh, with Jeremy's voice behind it, I hope you do. Yeah. Well, you know, I would. (laughs) Well, and we, you know, we did that with, um, oh, when Nate, when, I don't know, we were probably six or eight months in, and Nate from Wide Men, uh, Camp Jump got a hold of me. He's like, hey, do you want me to record an outro for you guys? It it just adds a little something. Guys, if you're out there, you're thinking about starting a podcast, and I know this is outside the purview of this show, but if you're thinking about starting a podcast, throwing another podcaster's voice in there, does help break up. It does, it does make you sound a little bit higher profile because you've got other voices on your show than just the two of you who sit around talking week after week. You know what I mean? It just adds a little element to it that kind of just makes you seem a little more professional, even though it's podcasting and doesn't need to seem professional. It does help. And also, like you said, getting those voices out there, getting on other people's podcasts and helping mm-hmm. each other. That's what it's all about in the podcast world, too. We do we do try to you know help each other out. Uh, shout out there real quick to Wide Men Can't Jump. Like you said, we had Nate on there doing ours at the uh, at the end bumper, I think it was. Yep. Pretty good. So stuff all like right. that helps, man, out there. Um, I will take us down just a notch if you don't mm-hmm. care, Jeremy. I hate to, but I'm going to have to just for our listeners out there. Here's what I'd like you to do. Um, just – Take a moment, however you do it, whatever you do. Just keep text in your thoughts, people. Um, Texas wife Sheila passed away the other day, and um, he's put that on social media now. So it is out there. Text, please accept my condolences on behalf, on behalf of the Bell to Bell Bobby Blaze. I personally... Uh, he wrote Jeremy and myself. We knew early on. Uh, we didn't say anything about it or put it on our, you know, Twitter feeds or anything else until he made it official. He done a really nice video uh, remembering his wife, Sheila. I had the pleasure of meeting her back in April, and she was a really, really sweet lady. Um, and I say that with most sincerity. We, we shared a meal together with uh, with her and Tex and my brother and myself, and, and uh, it was just a really good evening of wrestling. Um, so Tex, you know, man, just hang in there and stay strong. That's all I can tell you. Yep. I did speak to him. And he told me he was in the process of making a video, and then he sent that to Jeremy and myself. And it, and it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, dedication to his wife, Sheila. So, uh, Tex, just hang in there, buddy, and I'll let Jeremy finish that up before we move on. And, fans, just keep that in your, keep that in your mind. And, and if you know Tex, send him some uh, send him some condolences or what have you, however you handle that thing. The only, the only thing, and I, this is something I should have said to him, so I'll just address this to anybody who's going through recent grieving Um I know what it's like to be in your shoes. Uh, the main thing I am going to suggest is just remember you gotta, you gotta get up in the morning. You have to change your clothes. You gotta shower. You gotta brush your teeth. You gotta eat something. You gotta keep shaving. It does not easy, get easier. It just gets further away and you gotta hang in there till it does. But in the meantime, pretend that you're still giving a shit and pretend that you still feel things, even though I know you won't for a couple weeks. I text them awfully sorry. So. Yep. All right. Here we go, people. So, and I know we've got a good group of people that follow us, you know, on our YouTube channel at Text Does. He does a great job on that. We'll get back to that later on. Follow Jeremy at the Geekish Cast on Twitter. You can follow me at Bobby Blaze 744 and you can follow the Bell to Bell Blaze. That's on Twitter also. And those, those links, uh, like I said, I, I didn't want to share anything, nor did Jeremy for that reason, because text, we waited till he shared it publicly. Uh, text can be found at Cheap Heat, uh, on there. Um, usually if you just go to the Bell to Bell Blaze podcast, you'll see some of the stuff he's tweeted out, uh, to help us out. So, uh, if you, if you know text, just, just go there and, you know, say hi or whatever. Um, might do him a world of good. So. Yep. Absolutely. Anyway. 
How about some shout outs, man? You got any? Um, I think you do. I'm, I know I do. Well, let's start with yours then, because I'm I'm a little bit choked up at the moment and you know kind of need to reset. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. All right, well, you reset. I'll tell you mine, man. I want to give a big shout out to Brian Last and the Six O Five, the Six O Five Super Podcast on the. I'm not going to yell out the mothers mothership, <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, so I caught in. And uh, left a couple voicemails. Uh, they were celebrating her hundredth uh, episode. And man, let me say this: if you're a fan of this show, I'm just about guarantee you'll love the 605 podcast, the Super Podcast. I've been on several episodes. I was a little bit stewed. I hadn't been on her for a while. I thought I had some heat. I left some voicemails. I'll just say this. Congratulations to the 100th episode. You people that waited for it, it's well worth the wait. It's actually in two parts, uh, part one and part two, obviously, how he broke them down, because I think he's got six hours of content, believe it or not. But with that said, uh, I was glad to be back. Thank you, Brian. Uh, to all the good fans that listen to the 605, I'm glad. I appreciate the kind words about hearing my voice on air again. And then on the second part, I think it's on part two, uh, my good friend Sean Waltman. They did an interview with Sean Waltman. So shout out to Sean, X Pop 360 there, the real Sean Waltman. Um, he has some real kind things to say about me. And uh, Sean and I speak from time to time, uh, you know, and Anyway, I'll just say this, that uh, Sean mentions back, he talked about earlier back when we was at Malenko's and training and this and that, and he had some, he just said, you know, I was a natural when it come to wrestling, and, and him and I, we were best friends at that time, really was. Man, we, I, I paid rent at this apartment with Phyllis Lee, who, who's now the part of I have to give her some props for my, my wrestling career. She helped so many professional wrestlers uh, through the years, and also MMA fighters, she helped a lot of them. Um, Sean brought her up and of course Malenko and Sean would come over and crash on a couch and, and we hung out just about every friggin' day, man. Uh, whether we were training at Malenko, whether we were going out to, to lunch, we even, uh, you know, lifted some weights together. We ran around together. We went to every show we could together. Uh, we set the ring up for NWA a couple of times when they, when they came to town. Uh, we, he made us some forged passes for the WWF back in the day. And sure enough, they worked and, and we got in. Uh, he had connections and just some good times back in the day when we was younger. And, uh, I, I want to thank Sean for, for sharing those memories with some people, especially with the audience that the 605 has and also saying some kind words with me. With that said, uh, several people wrote me, uh, one of them shout out Robert Silva. He said that, um, he heard some good things, uh, whether he's talked to, uh, Superboy, uh, Sean Walkman, and he mentioned a couple, other, a couple other people telling me that no matter who he's talked to or heard from, they, they really don't have a crossword to say about me. And I appreciate that because I tried to keep my business as professional as possible when I was in professional wrestling. And, um, I'd like to think, you know, that, uh, uh, I just tried my best to do my best and um, uh, try to be good to everyone, you know, kind of what I tell you on here, man. And uh, uh, hopefully I can continue to do that. But it sure is good to be back in the 605, and it sure was good to hear from my friend uh, Sean Waltman, express, especially talking about some of the earlier days in our professional careers. Uh, so that's my shout-outs. And um, if I missed anyone, it wasn't intentional. Um, thank you very much for listening to the show and being a fan of the show. And uh, that's me, and I hope you're ready to go, Jeremy, because that's my rant right there, yeah, man. I'm pretty much set. Well, uh, Bobby, we are bringing in a new sponsor this week. Uh, it is for fans of wrestling, wrestlers, and wrestling promoters or would-be wrestling promoters. It is HighSpots.com. You can get to them by going to TinyURL.com slash BBHighSpots for everything wrestling. All right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. You sent me that message the other day. I was waiting for, for our tinyurl.com slash BB high spots. Every, uh, everything for wrestling. I was like, wait a minute. What do you got us on? Cause I'm familiar with high spots. And if you don't know what high spots is, go check it out. Cause it has everything for wrestling. Like the professor there said, man, it's pretty damn awesome. So I'm glad to be affiliated with them now. Thank you so much, professor. Yep. Well, that being said, let's go ahead and jump into. Well, what has been one of the biggest uh, breaking stories of the week, and that is the NWA has shit the bed. <laughs> oh, well, that's one way of putting it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so ah, this is on Twitter, at the Geekish Cast, at NWA. I watch your wrestling show to see wrestling. Kind of let down by this. 
I was getting ready to go to bed. I was I was let down big time, and I really hadn't tweeted or anything about it, I don't think. Um, and I was thinking, how can I word this and leave it to my good friend Jeremy, you know, the geekish cast over there? Because the time difference there, he watched it about three hours later, of course. And yep. I was like, hmm, that's the way I felt. So I put, absolutely, huge letdown. Um, and then Tex wrote in the effort to erase corny was just too much. Wonder how to handle the R and R express the title. We'll find out. But anyway, uh, Jeremy's brother, man, he says, D- uh, D- what is it? Um, Dustin, right? Yeah. He says this was kind of ridiculous. Either not addressing it or mentioning it was taped before he quit would have made much better sense, I guess, is what he was meaning there. Yeah. And and man, I'm just telling you, I was just like, I could see you. They could have easily added a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to look here. I'm not going to sit here and shit on them. I'm not getting off. I'm not on the bandwagon, but I'm not getting off of watching it. I think they. I'm not going to stop watching it. But man, what a fucking letdown. I was it, really let down. It just let the air right out of the tires because, yes. yeah, look, we were all hot on it for weeks. You know, me yes. and my brother get together once a week to watch it, specifically to watch NWA wrestling. And then, you know, okay, the shit with Corny happened, and, you know, however you feel about that is however you feel about it. Not, right. Yeah. We whatever. talked about that. Yeah, we already talked about it. Not, not whatever. These knuckleheads had that video for two fucking months, and nobody looked at that and said, hey, that's kind of racist. They all waited until it was a goddamn problem, and then forced a problem and then tried to pretend like Jim Cornette wasn't there the next week. Look, we, we know what happened. We saw it happen. We saw it happen in real fucking time, basically. You know, my brother's idea was like, put up a disclaimer. Hey, you know what? We recorded these episodes before, you know, Jim got, uh, Jim resigned and we're going to have to run out the clock on these episodes because they still have a story. They told the rock and roll still won the tag titles. Like uh, Tex pointed out. Yep. And then we spent, shit, 30 minutes going through that. Well, we spent 10 looking at that show going, fuck, is anybody going to wrestle? Because you remember week two, my thing was, hey, 10 minutes into a wrestling show, we've already been in the ring twice. Yes. And now all of a sudden that wasn't the case. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was like, well, skip ahead. Maybe something's going on. And besides your girl, Thunder Rosa, which just, I don't know, it's... it was fine watching her, but it screwed up the narrative that they're building for her character. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, you know, whatever. It was fine seeing her do it, blah, blah, blah. But when they've been pushing her as a nasty-ass heel for a couple weeks, now we're supposed to cheer for her in her MMA fight. It's a mood breaker. It just It's a whiplash, and it just didn't work for me. Go ahead and pick up where you left off there. No, I was just going to say, like you said, you're, you're, you was, you're 10 minutes in, and you're waiting for a wrestling match, and you... I'm with, like, had I been part of the conversation with you and your brother, because I was watching it by myself, it's one of those things where you're like, hey, you know, where's the wrestling? And also, being smart, uh, not a smart ass, but being smart to the business and saying, hey, just like Dustin said, you know, like, hey, just what you just said, uh, put a disclaimer on her. We, we are, we saw it happen in real time. We know these things happen. Just continue, put it, whatever it is, just continue with the program. It just kind of took everything out of sync when they're showing uh, you know, you go from, from that week seven there, I guess it was, and there's a good, the, um, con- continuality of the show. Um, oh, I, I, you know, I, I, here's the thing. They got so, I'm stumbling my words, but they got so many talented people there. Mm-hmm. So many people that can do, there's, there's great bodies there. There's great wrestlers there. There's great interviews and promos there. But like you said, they kind of let the air out of the tire right there, man, out of the whole program and just sucked the energy out of the room because, I love the thing with Thunder Rosa, but it might not, that might have, might have been to put the show in there because it doesn't fit the narrative as to what they were doing with her character in the ring. And that's the thing about Cornette. He always put the town over. You know, he, that's, you know, he, when he was there, that was his job and, and they, they all, they do a great job. The announce, I'm fine with all of it, but that show just kind of like, whew. Sucked it all down a notch, man. And um, then they had the one match with the empty arena match. Um, I know you can throw that together. I'm like, yeah, come on. They could have added. They had so much probably in a can. They could have added a whole show and gave highlights of the first seven weeks of just wrestling. You know what I'm saying? They could have showed the girls tag team match from the week before. They could have showed the dark match or what do you want to call it, empty arena. Match. Then they could have went back and showed even the first match that aired. You know what I'm saying? With the editing, they could have said, "Here was our first match when we went on YouTube and Facebook." They could have put together a much better show. What do I know? I'm not there. 
I'm not being paid to, to, to be there. I'm, and I, and I'm like Dennis Stamp. I'm not, I wasn't booked. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not playing armchair booker. I'm just saying we were, uh, we were big on this NWA, uh, studio wrestling, that nostalgic feeling you got when you watched it back in the day. And they just kind of took that away with the, the show they did put out. But I, I hope. They do better, and I know they got more tapings coming up this month. So uh, let's just see what happens. Yeah, and you know, right now I'm I'm starting. Like I was really excited that all this like cool new stuff was hitting the forefront with pro wrestling. You know, AEW had come out, NWA was back. Um, uh, you know, then there's all this weird shit going on, like this shit with ROH and Kelly Klein. I yeah. don't even quite, I can't even quite get my head around what's happening there. And then almost, you know, then this shit with the NWA and then Jim Cornette and then their fucking ham-fisted way of dealing with it afterwards. Now all of a sudden I'm kind of back to the point where I'm like, you know what? I was fine for 25 years without pro wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, me, we go back to just me and Bobby talking about old shit again and, you know, I'll be fine. Well, I think we're going to be fine. And, 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 and I, I'm with you. I don't know that I've missed too much uh, <laughs> over the last years where I haven't watched it. I do pick my spots if I do watch something. But, um, Jeremy, I, I, I'm, I'm going to give you one more. I'm just going to throw this out at you, okay? Yeah. Uh, and I didn't watch it, but I saw it. And, and there's someone, I'm going to mention a name, and you're going to be like, you was like me on this. I'm like, it's going to be hard to shit on this because I'm not trying to, just so you know. But you was talking about you missing something. Let me ask you this. Did you miss anything about uh, maybe a belt that The Fiend come out with? Uh, what do you think about this belt, about this Fiend? Uh, I guess what, Bryant, uh, Bry oh, shit, Bray Wyatt. Uh, this belt and title, uh, Tom Cervini, I guess, uh, he made the damn thing. So, mm -hmm. hey, right there, mention that name right there. I'm going to let you run with that. Uh, you can tell me whatever. You, I, I just saw this, and I got caught up on something in a little uh, rabbit hole, if you will, on, on Twitter. They're going, what the fuck? So I guess this belt, though, they're wanting it for sixty four ninety five, basically $6,500. To, to get this belt. what Did you see the belt? What do you think about it? And then, and then we'll kind of get off the uh, new, the stuff that's going on right now and, and get into some other stuff about our program yeah. that we do. But, but these are just things on the forefront that we want to really kind of talk about. What do you think about the Fiend's belt? Okay, well, I, I have to say, out of the few things the WWE does that I've paid a little bit of, t of attention to, Bray Wyatt is definitely one of them. Yeah. He's got the lineage. He's got the charisma. Um you know, and then I guess I guess the mask that he wears now was also made by Tom Savini, who is horror movie royalty. You know, Dawn yes, of the absolutely. Dead, Friday the 13th. I have just, no yeah. problem with any of that. I was just wondering, I put on there, what do you think? Because I was talking about the price. I was like, who the fuck? What the fuck? That's what I got caught up in. Yeah. That, that was my well, deal. Yeah, Bobby, just, I, you know where I'm coming from, because I'm yeah. not shitting on a performer, and I'm not definitely not shitting on a person that no. made that fucking belt, because that dude's a legend. Sex pistol, baby. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the original Night of the Living Dead. Of the day, you know, I mean, come on. No, he, yeah, no, he's got his cred. Uh, yeah, and he was Sex Machine and uh, Dust Before Dawn. Yeah, Sex Pistol. He's that Sex Machine, right? Yeah. Um, uh, but, okay, so, I, I, you know me. I, I was never a wrestler, but I, I would do a wrestling show. I try not to use wrestling slang too often, but $6,500 for that belt has to be a quote-unquote work, I believe, or a quote-unquote rib, I believe would be the term. <laughs> I didn't think about it, but it may be. I, I, I really didn't. I just was like, I, I don't know. Cause my, my opinion was, was, was this. I, I was just like, okay, what? I, I didn't know what to think. That was, that's what I was getting at. So that's why I put on there, you know, what do you think about it? Because I just knew it was a thing and, and, and I was like, oh man. So speaking of which, I'm just going to kind of get myself a segue. When we're talking about $6,500 here, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. I just got to tell you this. So, you know, people spend their money however they want. And if you got $6,500 to spend on a WWE belt, more power to you, man. That's great. Um, I'd like to have about 65 cents right now for a fucking soda somewhere. I don't know. But, you know, people put their money in belts. People put their money in uh, political campaigns. Famous celebrities, you know, uh, do different things and stuff. So I thought about this. Jeremy knows where I'm probably going with mm -hmm. this. And I'm just putting this out there for all you fans of the Bell to Bell with Bobby Blaze podcast. So um, it's okay with me. 
uh, I'd like to do this. We've done it before. We This is our 18th month together, uh, Jeremy and myself doing this podcast. We have not made a dime. Uh, we've put everything into the uh, hosting fees and a little bit of advertising, both out of pocket and just a little bit we did off our last GoFundMe. So I'm going to put this proposal out there, Professor. I would like to start a GoFundMe for the Bell to Bell Bobby Blaze podcast of $1,000. Now, we looked into it. I think that's the, the opening they, for this campaign. That was about the minimum they said you should ask for. Now, with that said, we're going to take, and we've been here 18 months, That'll pay for at least one year to 18 months of hosting fees that yep. won't come out of Jeremy's pocket or my pocket. So that way it's about 20 to $25 a month uh, that we have to take care of that. That would help cover our costs. The rest of it, we've put a little bit of money into the advertising we're going to use for advertising, whether it be 10 or $20 per month for the next 12 to 18 months. We would like to buy some Facebook ads. We'd like to buy some Twitter ads. Um, we'd just like to get the word out there about our YouTube channel. We like to get the word out there about our Bell to Bell verbal podcast that you're listening to right now and um, just see what we can do, man, and, and try to, and again, uh, maybe in 12 months we'll reevaluate this thing. Maybe in 18 months we've really got this thing off and running. But like I said, if everyone, it, it, really, if everyone just pitched in $5, our regular listeners just pitched in $5, uh, we had reached that goal really, really easy. There's no set time limit on it, but nope. this was the last month that we paid for on our hosting fees. Like I said, it's about $20, $25 per month. Um, plus, we'd also like to get some guests on the show. And again, we're going to do some advertising. And, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here, uh, when you hear my, uh, I'm not begging. You know, when you hear my voice, you know I'm being sincere. If everyone just, you know, donated five dollars, uh, yes, I know Christmas time's coming. Uh, after the first year, you'll be setting some new goals and this and that, and uh, maybe you got a bonus at work or, or whatever it may be. Um, just consider donating to the GoFundMe, and I think Jeremy, if you could, if you would, maybe go set that up for us. And and again, as I don't think Jeremy is trying to make any money off this. I don't think I'm trying to make any money off this. What we're hoping to do is use this for the hosting fees to advertise to eventually make some money off of this. That's right. our goal. That was our goal when we first started. Let's do 18 months and see what's happening. So with that said, Jeremy, I'm going to let you talk because if we don't do this, um, I don't think there was any talk of us saying at 18 months we're just going to stop. So I'm not telling you fans out there right now that if we don't get this goal, we're just going to stop podcasting. I'm just saying this would help us to continue our podcasting. Right. Well, and you know, just for people who may have joined recently or just started listening to us, when we had originally set this up, it was before I'd had a number of consecutive hiccups in my life because I went through a period where my dad died, uh, lost my job, had a heart attack when my me and my wife split up, took a job that pays way less than I thought, and then I did six months of blackout drinking, um, which is why we were as unevenly producing the show as we were. Um, now I've got my shit a little more together, and I would like to continue back on to putting the show where it was intended to go in the first place, which was A, to help Bobby get out there and expose his writing and stuff to new audiences, um, also to share great behind-the-scenes stories with pro wrestling fans, and to shine a spotlight on the great days of pro wrestling, which we kind of hope are coming again, so there's plenty of content for us to cover we just need a little help, uh, you know, being able to produce the show. When it was first started, I made twice what I'm making now, and I could afford to just do everything out of pocket, which quickly came to an end once we started. So that's why we're going to try a GoFundMe. Um, yeah, it may sound like a lot that we're asking for, but when you consider what we're trying to do, it's really not that much. Right. Yeah. So there we go, folks. Uh, I'll put that on Twitter pretty soon, I'm sure. And there's a Facebook page. I'm sure Jeremy will put it over there on that for you. We'll get the word out there. And also, if you all could please help get the word out, we'd appreciate it very much. And uh, thank you for being our regular listeners. I know, um, you know, I was speaking about Sean earlier. I just want to say uh, a lot of people listen to the show for the good behind-the-scenes stories, man. And uh, I'll tell you a couple really good ones real quick, um, well, just stories that I know. When I first met Sean, man, he was just a 15-year-old young boy, man, and Malenka was training him. And I talk about this in my first book is uh, once I met Malenka and decided to train and stuff, 
uh, I had been living in Orlando and I was going to move one down to Tampa. Uh, so I was just kind of going on the weekends for the first three or four months. And then I eventually moved down here. Well, Malenko, of course, was known for his conditioning. As, as Sean talked about in his, his interview with Brian the other day, is like, you know, he knew he great interviews, <laughs> great trainer. And then he was known for his conditioning techniques, too. And I remember being out on that hot asphalt of, um, behind the school there and doing 10 on ones, which are 10 Hindu squats, one push up, 10, in, you know, nine and then two. You build yourself up. It, basically, what you amount to is you get 110 push ups, 110 push uh, Hindu squats in a, in a lot of amount of time. And he had Sean on out there doing those one time. And I'm a couple years older than Sean, but I was, I was in good shape as he said, but not wrestling conditioning. And there was no way I was going to quit, but he kept giving Sean hell about, you know, uh, just pushing him, pushing him. And that's the thing, man. Sean just worked so hard back then. He, he, he had something to prove to people. You know, he was small, skinny, and, uh, he actually done the the, uh, the shoot fighting on Sundays. He'd get over in the ring with those big guys, and, and he did a lot more than I did as far as the, the hooking and the catch and catch head. And he he, he learned, man, uh, and he knew karate. He was he was into karate and all that. He just just a lot of fun times with them. And uh, the story I was going to tell, the, the one story was uh, I mentioned earlier about the WWF coming, and he was working with the guy uh, that owned a, a – a computer place and Sean went and like cut some different little things out of magazines, a WWF magazine. And, uh, he made these forced <laughs> too late now for the time. It, uh, ran out on this. We went to a show at the sun dome. He put it, uh, uh, little, cards together it basically gave us all access <laughs> and it was pretty cool because it had our name on it and it had wwf logo on it now I mean, he made a really fancy man and we just wore him in like we was, you know hey king shit we walked right in the back walked up and picked up some seats where no one catch on to us and we like i can't believe we got by with that but we did it was just something fun another time uh, one of the times i remember um setting a ring up the uh, nwa came through we done it a couple of times but we went up to sarasota and uh Got to, uh, uh, we, we set the ring up and, uh, we was just like honored to do that. I'm so fucking glad sure. we didn't have a cage match at night and we actually got to go out. It's the first time I ever put a cage around a ring and we got to do that, man. It was so cool. And, um, uh, at the end of the night, you know, we got to take it down and stuff. And I'm going to tell you guys, listen to this. They gave us $5. That was, that was the best fucking $5 I'd earned at that point, man. I mean, they went, we didn't, we didn't expect the $5. But the ring guy that night at the NWA down in Sarasota back in the day, uh, Klondike Bill was one of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gordon Gordon was uh, down in that area as well. I got to meet him. Um, shoot, I was uh, drawing a blank again on Gordon's last night. He lived in, in Tampa. Shaw mentioned him on one of his uh, podcasts the other day. But uh, Gordon, um, just some really nice guys, older guys. Uh, around the ring, but they handed us both a $5 bill that night. And I, that was just so cool to be like, man, that's, you know, you actually made money in wrestling, you know? So, um, anyway, for what it's worth, I just kind of want to tell you about those. I know we just talked about rest, uh, the GoFundMe. We've talked about high spots and this and that. I don't know. You want to talk about some more wrestling, Jeremy? I just, I just throw stuff out there, man. Cause this is catch as catch can. So it's your turn. Catch me if you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, let's see here. What, what haven't we covered yet? Um, well, you know, we've got two ideas we're working on for upcoming shows. Uh, one oh, of them yeah, is yeah. going to be the Mount Rushmore of wrestling. And I think we're actually going to break that into blocks. But we may have to put that off a little bit more because I know Tex is going to be pretty instrumental in how we yes. set this one up. Um, the other one we wanted to do was holiday shows. What were our favorite holiday wrestling shows? Because back in the day, Thanksgiving and Christmas were big days for pro wrestling. Even here in California, uh, Sacramento, I think, did a big show every Thanksgiving when uh, Roy Shire was running it. Yeah, so we had, I come up, this was our idea, we took a little bit more work than what we thought this week being Thanksgiving week. You know, we we was going to do like, there's Thanksgiving Thunder, there's Christmas Chaos, uh, you know, there was there was the uh, uh, Starcade and uh, the different things, and we really wanted to do more justice if we research this a little bit. So we want the fans' input on this. Again, you can hit Jeremy up at the Geekish. This is on Twitter. Hit him up at the Geekish Cast. You can hit me up at Bobby Blaze Seven Forty Four. Or best on this one here, just go to the Bell to Bell Podcast or over to the Facebook link there, um, and and tell us what you think. You know, would be 
shows that you saw either back in the day or even some recent one maybe that because Christmas and Thanksgiving were two huge nights in wrestling Christmas Eve rather uh, and Thanksgiving Day uh, evening and man I've wrestled on a lot of times on on Thanksgiving night and 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 I always loved it because you got a good packed house and and usually they stack the cards up so you get to work with some really talented people and uh, we just like to hear your feedback on that so we could put together a really good top 10 on that because that'd be something I think would be really good for the YouTube channel as well this podcast to where it works for both advantages you know what i'm saying well, we're really putting not that we haven't but put some really quality content out con, content out there on a really well represented you know uh top 10 of holiday you know wrestling shows i was telling jeremy i, I saw a show on easter sunday one time and i think as i was with this chick i think she wanted to make out one of the road warriors or something i don't know <laughs> but uh, that don't count that don't count i wasn't watching i wasn't looking or nothing uh i'm just i was watching the show yeah i was watching the show i don't know what the i don't know what the man behind the curtain was doing with her uh but you know we're talking more like the thanksgiving christmas shows the two biggest nights of the of the year for wrestling back in the day um Jeremy, anything about that? Because I'm gonna drop something about the uh, the Mount Rushmore real quick. No, go ahead. Let's let's hit the Mount Rushmore. Yeah. So the Rock, um, we had been talking about this way before this tweet came out, but basically, uh, we want to do a Mount Rushmore of, of professional wrestling. I, I'm gonna mention a couple of mine here in just a minute. Jeremy can mention his uh, without giving all, all of them away. But the other day, a couple of days ago, the Rock put one out, you know, and he said he had put Hogan and Flair. And he put Gorgeous George slash Bruno San Martino, and he put Stone Cold Steve Austin or Steve Austin. So someone had sent him, though, Flair, The Rock, The Undertaker, and Stone Cold. And I thought, man, and that, that was a, a BR Wrestling, Drop Your All-Time Wrestling Mount Rushmore. Well, I didn't want to send mine in because I knew we would been, we've been working this for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Plus, we're going to break ours down into decades. We've got like three different decades, but we're also going to do our own personal one and, and a combined one. So, again, hit us up on a bell-to-bell blade with that. What do you think about the, the BR Wrestling with Flair, The Rock, Undertaker, and Stone Cold, and also, what do you think about John, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock? He went with Hogan and Flair, Gorgeous George Bruno, and then Stone Cold. What do you think about those two lists to start us? I'm gonna give you a couple of mine, and then we'll we'll kind of just wind things down as we keep going here. I know that makes sense, contradicting myself. Why? We'll keep things going while we wind down. Hold on, Jeremy. Let me rewind my mm-hmm, fucking watch mm-hmm. and re-say that. Take, take another stab at that one, yeah. Elbow to my wrist here, or let me not go around the world to fucking cross the sidewalk. Let's talk about the Mount Rushmore, what I just spoke about. Then we'll go from there. That sounds good. And, yeah, we are coming up on time here, and I realize, guys, we yeah. didn't do our normal list, blah, 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 whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I think the Mount Rushmore is a great idea. I, I know this is a fan topic that comes up all the time. There are so many things that you could do, which is why we're going to break it into eras, like the original golden yes. era, like the you know, DuMont Network days of the 50s. Um, and then I think we were going to do, uh, was it DuMont would be, what, 48 through 60-something? Yeah, I think and, it's a classic. Yeah, That's so then, and then the next era would be 70s, 80s, and the beginning of the 90s. And then the modern modern era would be, you know, 2000 to now, I guess, is how we were going to do it. And then, then we'd have to do an all-time. Yeah. And, you know, shit, how do you do an all-time? I mean, what's your what's your criteria? Because Gorgeous George has to be on there, because before him, there really wasn't intro music. There really wasn't a heel persona yet. There was bad guys, but not like Gorgeous George. Right. Yeah. Buddy Rogers, you can't leave him off. Oh, man, good one, yeah. Bruno, okay, you leave Bruno off, you've committed a heresy, okay? <laughs> but then, like, guys like us, we're going to be throwing out stuff that, you know, Vern, Vern should be on some list somewhere. Yeah, yeah. You know? Would um, he make your personal one during that particular, for, you for know, one of those eras? He, I, he would make it at least during an era. Um, yeah, you know, uh, but, you know, for me, I would constantly be having to use an abacus to score between him and Bockwinkle. Which one of those two would I consider most important, you know? Um, well, and, and for younger people, yeah, the AWA isn't that big of a deal. But if you go back to the 70s, you realize that Vince McMahon got rich stealing from the AWA. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. Guess who? I, I'm going I'm to 
Someone told me this the other day in person, because I talk to people sometimes about, you know, oh, this is what's coming up on a podcast. What do mm-hmm. you think about this? And and this person, you know who they told me should be on a Mount Rushmore? Who's that? They Vince. They said Vince yeah. McMahon. Yeah. And I thought, man, I was like, and if a younger person, well, younger than me, I'm an old fuck. What do you say? Uh, you know, you have to agree with me on that, by the way. But anyway, no. Um, yeah, they said Vince. And I thought, that's interesting. They sit there and told me some reasoning. And I, I listened to them. And I was like, yeah. Yes, good point. Good point. Um, I think you know a lot of people is going to say your flares and your Hogan's. I, I mean, I certainly would. But but the the one that hasn't been mentioned, what one? Because we've talked about this before. I don't know that Vince makes one, but he could, um, and I can see that person's point. But um, one I have to think would make it would be Andre Giant. Yeah, that's just you know I'm just throwing that out there. That's just someone we haven't talked about as far as making it. But I don't know if he covers all errors or not. You know if he but all time great has to be on there somewhere. You know on one of those lists. Um, like you said, I mean you leave Bruno off or even The Rock. You know of course he didn't put himself on there, but he's he's on this one they sent in with Flair, The Rock, Undertaker, and Stone Cold. So. I guess the question is going to be is we want the fans input on that. And then we're going to text is going to be a part of a big part of that. Like you mentioned, and, and we're going to get together and do the airs and we're going to do a Mount Rushmore wrestling. I really hope the fans get behind us on, on that as well as get behind us on the Christmas and, and Thanksgiving shows as to what are, you know, some of the biggest shows uh, in the past that took place during the holidays uh, with uh, Christmas fastly approaching. I may mention, but uh, anyway, let's get ready to close some things out here. Jeremy, what do you think? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we just ran out of time, so let's go ahead yep. and wrap this sucker up. But, yeah, the Rushmore will be an interesting one, but definitely on both the Rushmore and the Holidays episode. Um, guys out there, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you can get a hold of us, get a hold of us. Let us know your feedback on that because I definitely want to hear it. Yes, please do. One more thing before we close out, Jeremy. I just want to mention this. Uh, thanks for checking us out, fans. I uh, hopefully you'll hear from us between now and Christmas. We, we've got some things planned. Uh, by the time you hear this podcast, Christmas probably be just, you know, we're just now this is, uh, early December when you're hearing this. Mm-hmm. So there's plenty of time. So we'll get another podcast or two out there, I'm sure. Uh, but anyway, if you, if you enjoy this podcast, we appreciate you very much. We also have a YouTube channel, and Tex helps run that, a large part of help running that. Let me say that. If you go to tinyurl.com slash video, we have over 6,300 subscribers on there, and it's just got some really, real good quality content of Jeremy and myself talking, and Tex has taken and put some real good footage to that, and we've got some great top 10 topics on there from the most legitimate badass. I think there's about 17 or 18, you know, hot women that we did for Valentine's Day that we did very, very respectfully. We did the top 10 commentators, top 10 uh, greatest baby faces, regional, top 10 heels, regional. We also put some stuff on our most recent one, you know, reasons we love Bobby the Brain Heenan, but we've got some about Tully Blanchard. We've got one, our biggest one at, at one point was Dusty Rhodes. We've got one on Piper. So there's some great content. Again, that's over on tinyurl.com slash video. And Jeremy, I just want to say, I know, and to the wrestling fans, I know this podcast will be different than we're, and especially you new listeners. It was a little bit different this week than we normally do it, but we really did do needed to do some housekeeping